Oh, how does he keep doing this where his songs are musically so beautiful, mesmerizing, it catches your attention, but then there's so much psychology even in the lyrics. Yo, this is actually really deep. Oh my gosh. I'm like processing in real time. Hey everybody, welcome back. Welcome to the Ultimate World Music Reaction Channel, all about music and psychology. We're diving into another one. I've been exploring an artist named Ren and I have been loving his music, R-E-N, Ren, an artist from the UK. And you guys have been asking me to check out more of his work, which I am and will continue to do because his work, his artistry, his musical genius is phenomenal. If you like, check out my reactions to his songs, Hi Ren and Sick Boy. You can find those in my UK playlist. Playlists are organized by countries, countries of origin of where the singer the artist is from or where the music is from. We're all about world music, as you know, so you can find that in the UK playlist. For those of you who've never been here before, welcome. We go on these musical rides, exploring music from all around the world, all kinds of genres, diving into psychology and into philosophies, exploring lyrics and how the music affects us. If you are new and you don't know this already, this channel is about real talk, real reactions. So if you're looking for bias confirmation and just want me to get up out of my chair and scream and holler, even if I don't like it, you're gonna find a different experience here. We are going all around the globe, diving into music, all kinds of genres, all kinds of artists, various languages and cultures, learning about instruments, about culture, learning about music, and especially about the psychology behind lyrics and behind the impact that music has on us. This is the deep, deep. But I'm so happy that you're here and I'm excited to explore these various songs with you. Welcome to this studio. The channel's growing fast, you guys, and my hope is that this can be a really big platform one day, a community where we can encourage one another, where we can appreciate the art that is music. And so keep subscribing, like, comment, share. Today I want to check out Ren and Chinchilla, Chalk Outlines. Over one million views was put out six years ago. Make sure to subscribe to Ren. His channel's growing and I think it's awesome and well-deserved. Chinchilla is, I think, a young urban pop solo artist from London. Is that right? That's pretty much the only thing I've seen so far without getting too much information. London-based urban pop artist Chinchilla. And welcome to the channel. Here we go. I already know this is going to be so good. That would have been me. <laughs> I like the font he uses for his um, titles and the mo and the clips. Oh man! Oh, he got me. <laughs> So eerie somehow. Raw and dope. I'm still here in this bed that I crawled in. I hope that I'm someone else in. Nice. I'm gonna go back. So I've seen him play acoustic guitar. It's dope to see him on an electric. But also in the other songs I've seen so far, their focus was his rap skills. And he would sing and did that. <laughs> here, it's dope to see him sing more. Their focus here, at least so far right now, is more on the singing as, as, as of now. And I'm hearing a beautiful lingering vibrato there on those notes in the end. I like let me go back. I'm still here in this bed that I crawled in. Hope that I'm someone else in the morning So 
take this one, wash it down and you'll be fine. And walk around in the floating chalk outline. Dude, his voice. So it goes, let it be. In the gallows, a balance on my toes, so I. voices are beautiful and very cool together both of them have a very strong voice and a beautiful subtle vibrato at the end of their notes i feel like you can really tell how they're singing well out of their diaphragm a lot of strength but there's also a level of force like even in the veins in his neck you can just see the force and strength that's being applied Oh my word, both very strong. And it's cool because sometimes you have two artists and they more complement each other. One is more rough and, you know, more raspy and then something more soft and subtle. Here, I feel like they have similar voices in regards to their strengths, but both still different ranges and it still complements because of that male-female dynamic here. Beautiful. Sheesh. Go, go. Harmonies, man. I'm balanced on my toes so I can breathe. Mm -hmm. But little by little, bit by bit, I push it back down with a new habit. If not for long, just for a while, I bury myself with a great big smile. he keep doing this with his songs you guys i'm like over here trying to decide do i pause and talk do i take notes because i don't want to forget my thoughts how does he keep doing this where his songs are musically so beautiful it mesmerize it, it, it's mesmerizing it catches your attention in composition harmonies melodies vocal skills you know guitar skills but then there's so much psychology even in the lyrics you guys know that's what we're about here and that's what's so beautiful where you experience this and it's just Ah, multifaceted art. Before I forget, real quick, I love that they were harmonizing and how they now are singing in unison. That's beautiful because it just, for one, creates dynamic musically. Two, their voices work together well. Three, on a psychological level, and this is my subjective um, opinion. So tell me what comes to your mind in the comments below. But to me, it's fitting on a psychological level to come to this place of unison now because that part that they're singing, and we'll talk about the lyrics later, is relatable and fitting to both they're both at this place of saying you know it's hard because 
things keep changing. So to me, my thought was, hmm, that's so relatable. We all know what that's like. We all know that place of feeling like we got to take something else and try something else because we're afraid of things changing because it's all just going to vanish. And psychologically, that makes me think of, and I can't think of the word right now. I've, I've, I've heard, I was told a long time ago that there's even a word for it, where when you're experiencing joy, something's going well. There's this lingering fear of, oh, when is the other shoe going to drop, right? What's the catch? This idea of I can't enjoy it too much. I can't fully allow myself to experience my joy, my happiness, the present moment fully because something bad is bound to happen, right? It's all going to fade. It's all going to stop. Everything's going to change. So so that's kind of my thought, this unison here coming back to the the raw substance of it, right? Less, less, or, less composition, less harmonies, less dynamics vocally we're just both singing the same melody it's just getting back down to the basics um you know that's me reading into it but me that's what art is about me <laughs> um ah beautiful oh my goodness we'll talk about the lyrics after i feel like i'm forgetting something even the way they're interacting with each other both in their own place her in the corner him on the chair and then facing one another it's it's beautiful and it's very relational I think when we experience that, we're not alone. Kind of like NF's song, Just Like You. We realize there's a million others just like you. You're not hurting. We go from this place of everyone for themselves, struggling, hurting, working through their issues and their questions. Now we're facing one another. And it's almost like this magnetic pull of saying, I'm telling you what you're telling me. We both know what this is like, right? We all are unique. We all have our own personalities, but we know what it be's, what it's like, what it be's like what it means, what it is like to be human. You know what it's like to be human. We can relate. So even if we're light years different, we can relate at least on the fact that we are human. So there's this interaction of singing to one another and this ah, this pull of going, you know, this is what I'm thinking and feeling. This is my life experience. And you can relate to that at least on the level of we're both humans trying to figure this crap out. <laughs> Let's keep going. Such a perfect day. It's a beautiful shame. It's a beautiful shame. I like the harmonies and how she's building higher here. Oh. I'm scared of being okay. Cause all things change. Okay. But little by little, bit by bit, I'll push it back down with a new habit. If not for long, just for a while, I'll bury myself with a great big smile. Oh my, my, oh my, my, we trace ourselves in these chalk outlines. Oh my, my, oh my, my, we raise ourselves in these chalk outlines. Oh, yes. They ended that beautifully. I love that they let her just have that final phrase. Oh, her voice worked well with this beautifully. Chinchilla and Ren. Oh, beautiful. Okay, what do we, where do we start? Chalk. Fitting that this is down in a basement. Works with what I've seen so far with Ren. With Sick Boy and Hi Ren. That room, the, the, the stone cold room, that fluorescent light. Really stripped down to the basics, but creepy, but also real and raw and cold and just dealing with heavy things, okay? It's fitting that this is where it's taking place and not somewhere in a beautiful sunset at the beach. That's awesome, too. And we can deal with our existential crises at the beach, too. Sometimes that helps and is very therapeutic. But you feel what I'm saying. It's fitting to this feeling of dealing with the heavy topics. Chalk outline. Chalk making me think of, of rocks and stones. So those cold brick walls here fitting. They're both wearing white kind of cool because chalk, at least the chalk that I know, is usually white. When I heard chalk outlines, and I haven't looked up any meanings, maybe I should because I may miss something. When I heard the word chalk outlines, I'm thinking kids, first of all. You know how when kids like to lay on the ground and they want to trace each other? There's something simplistic and beautiful about that, right? Um, just, um, it makes me think of childhood fun, right? Coming up with simple games to play. It makes me think of relationship. You need someone else to help you draw your chalk outline because it's kind of hard to do it yourself. Um, it requires relationship. It requires trusting someone else, right? That they're going to outline you properly and, you know, not stab you in the process as you're laying there um, on the cold floor, you know, at the risk of being, you know, hurt or ridiculed. It makes me think of, um, yeah, relationship, even the way they were interacting with one another, like I said earlier, from their individual place to facing one another, her then 
and sitting on the floor almost at his feet, right? This, this just dynamics, the way relationships are, where we're sometimes apart, sometimes facing one another, sometimes one person at the feet of the other, then her standing up, then her doing her own little thing and him doing his thing. Relationship, life, humanity. Then chalk outlines also make me think of death, right? When you're at a crime scene, there's these outlines of where the victim laid or you, you know, you trace maybe pieces of evidence. It's really weird, really weird, I can't speak, to think that chalk can be associated with the beginning and the end of life. The beginning in the sense of children, right? Youngsters, young humans who are playing or having fun to then the end of life where if you were harmed or hurt by someone, chalk or is being used um, to trace, you know, evidence to trace where the body laid. That's just my thought when I hear chalk outlines, that word. Now let's talk uh, about lyrics. I'm still here in this bed that I crawled in. I hope that I'm someone else in the morning. So take this one, wash it down and you'll be fine. Then walk around in a floating chalk outline. Interesting. To me, this idea of despair, of hoping for a better beginning tomorrow. There's a scripture that talks about his mercies are new in the morning. And I think there's comfort in feeling like a new day can bring new hope, new mercy from God, new mercy of, of, of another human being, right? We're going to work this out in the morning. Let's get a good night's rest. When you're trying to make a big decision, sleep a, sleep, sleep a night, take a night to, to sleep on it. Um... But then this idea of washing it down makes me think of a pills, right? Maybe a pill to help you sleep because you have insomnia and you're restless or a pill to deal with some type of illness and ailment. This idea of walking around in a floating chalk outline is almost like you're, you're walking around like, a, um, like an outline of something, not substance. When you're an outline of sorts, chalk outline of silhouette, you're uh, a shell. You're not walking in your full potential, living life to the fullest, alive and well. So it goes, let it be. And the gallows I balanced on my toes so I can breathe. Dang, right? I mean, if you're hanging in the gallows, right, you're, 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 str you're struggling to stay alive and balancing on your toes, trying to stay afloat. This idea maybe of despair, of being so down in the pits, you're, you're really fighting to do the bare minimum of breathing, right? Thank God we can breathe every day. And it's hard if you are unable to freely breathe, right? But without breathing, we are not able to live. So if you can just breathe, I feel like that's not life to the fullest. That's just kind of like barely making it. Little by little, bit by bit, I push it back down with a new habit, right? Coping mechanisms, dealing with pain, just take another pill, which kind of works with, the, with some of the themes I see in the other songs of his that I've seen so far, where even the therapist in Sick Boy is like, you know, just take the pill, right? When we try to just cover the pain and cover the issues, not that there's not a place for medication, don't get me wrong, thank God for medication and medicine and science, there's a place for that. But just like there's a time and place for everything, there's also a time and place to deal with some of the deeper things. And I've talked on that in the past, and I think some people um, may not also may not have fully understood my heart or the context. And I won't go into detail on the topic now, but I would just generally want to explain when I'm talking on topics, please make sure you hear me in context and hear my heart behind it. I don't ever want anyone to feel left out or hurt. Um, I do have certain opinions on certain matters and I do have to be wise how much I say and how I say it because I don't want to hurt anybody, but also because, you know, this is a public platform. I have a responsibility to teach wisely. And then in addition, you know, there's this dance between, as a side note for you guys, between being honest, real talk, real reactions, like I promised, but still speaking the truth in love without, however, being afraid of being politically incorrect. I don't want to toddle on that side of the extreme either, where now I'm living in fear trying to please everybody. No, if we're always triggered by things or everybody makes us mad and we think everybody else has to change how they talk and what they say and include everybody, you're not going to make everybody happy and at some point people have to take responsibility for their own healing. That goes for me too, right? When you guys comment and you share how you feel. So all that to say is that I... I do feel there is a need for people to work internally or if we're looking for external healing though there's a place for that too external changes external healing external factors can be a reflection of what's going on inside and they're necessary right say if I want to be more healthy I got to work out or I might do something to make myself feel better about myself that there's a place for that but it also has to be inside from the inside out when it comes to self-esteem healing identity and so here I think this idea of just pushing it back down 
to me at least, is this idea of not dealing with the deep stuff inside. You push it down, you drown it out, be it with substance abuse, be it with coping skills that are unhealthy, or a new habit. Sometimes even the most harmful, innocent-seeming habits can be destructive, right? You could have people that go to the gym 24-7. Going to the gym is healthy in and of itself, right? But too much of anything is bad. And if they are just doing it because they are so terrified of 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 gaining some weight or of not being the the fittest person in the city, or if they're you know just slapping on makeup, makeup is not a bad thing in my opinion. There's something fun about adorning ourselves. But if that's all that I'm using to find self worth, if I can't function without it, if I feel like my entire identity is based on you know, looking a certain way and, you know, all that, all these different factors, all these different things we do, these habits, binging, binging TV shows, right? It could be shopping, you name it. The sky's the limit in regards to the ways that we try to cope and the habits we accumulate. And I think that kind of reflects on that. We push it down with those new habits. It takes courage. It takes strength to, when it's just us and our maker and we're by ourselves, nobody else around. And we try to really dive deep into where some of our pain is coming from and some of the deep stuff inside. I've buried my, I'll bury myself with a great big smile. We trace ourselves in these chalk outlines. Oh my, oh my. That too, the way they sang that beautifully is very fitting. This almost like a plea, almost like this desperate cry of, oh my, like, oh my gosh, you know, erase ourselves in these chalk outlines. Dang, we trace ourselves and we erase ourselves. It's almost like this empty silhouette tracing something, trying to grasp it. When you trace something, you're trying to grasp a hold of it. You're trying to gain a, a, a level of understanding. You're trying to grasp it, right? What did it look like? Where was it placed? We're, we're trying to take a hold of something, but then we end up erasing ourselves in these chalk outlines. Yo, this is actually really deep. Oh my gosh, the more I'm thinking about it. You, you trace something. <laughs> I'm like processing in real time. I'm an external processor, so I'm like processing as I'm talking. You trace something. We try to... We try to, that's my interpretations, but we try to trace ourselves. We try to get a grasp on our identity. We try to form who we think we are and trying to find our meaning and our worth and trying to figure out where we are and who we are and how big we are and in the sense of like just tracing it all. But when you trace something with chalk, a lot of times it's also not fully detailed, right? It's often this weird silhouette that you kind of gives you an idea of the way the person was laying, but it doesn't tell you anything about their structure of their hand, their face, their hair, right? Chalk outlines are always kind of very, you know, rough and not contoured, not detailed. So you can't really get a good idea of the person. You know what was a person? You can tell if they were bigger, smaller, taller, thinner, you know, heavier, but you can't really know the person through a chalk outline. And so we're trying to grasp identity, trying to grasp a hold of things, maybe of healing, of worth, of meaning, but we're also at the same time erasing ourselves. And when you look at a chalk outline, it's erased inside, it's empty, it's nothing. A sip of serotonin, don't cry because there is a pill for everything. Take this one, wash it down, you'll be fine. Yeah, this idea of, I think, drowning out some of that pain and those issues, looking for that fix, right? Looking for that chemical release of happiness, drowning the pain out with pills hills. Little by little, I push it back down with a new habit. Such a perfect day. Take it in just in case. Take it in just in case. I'm scared of being okay because all things change. That's what I was talking about earlier. When we have this fear of I'm feeling a level of peace or happiness. I feel okay today, but we're afraid of fully embracing that and savoring the present moment because we're afraid the shoe will drop and we're almost afraid to be okay and to enjoy these feelings of happiness because things change, right? I might lose this joy. I might lose this bliss. That goes for many things in life, a relationship that's going well. Oh no, but what if they betray me? What if this fails? What if this person dies? Existential fears. I talked about that more in Hiren. Little by little, I push it back down. And it's crazy because in the bridge when it says such a perfect day, take it in just in case. I do think a lot of times our existential fears drive us to that. We have a beautiful day and I do that sometimes where I want to be as present as possible because I don't know how much longer I'll be here. And so there's this weird dance between being present and taking it in because our life is is a fragile, not living in the past or the future, but being here and now. But there's also this other part of that scale, if you will, that also requires that we don't try to desperately grasp at this perfect day and this here and now because just in case, right? What if something else happens? I might die, I might die. And this, by the time we know it, we live like that. We're stressing out, trying to relax. It's almost like hurry up and slow down, right? Um, trying to relax. You're in there, better relax, 
do your best to relax. And it's like, naturally, you're going to be doing the opposite. So if we're living from this place of just in case, just in case, just in case, we're not going to really be enjoying the perfect day. That's that weird paradox in life. You're supposed to be present because life is short. But if you're so focused on life being short because you have to savor it all, you're going to end up missing life again because you're just focused on death. Or you're deep down just terrified of death. It's weird, isn't it? Um, just probably so much more we could say here. Y'all, this is deep. His songs are deep. This kid, he reminds me a little bit of one of my brothers. I love that kid. I would love to sing with him one day. Nah, that would be so freaking cool. Um, just awesome. And it was really cool to see that side of him. The electric guitar, the singing. Just this kid is a genius. I love it. What did you think? Let me know in the comments below. I loved listening to this. More Ren coming. Stay tuned. And I'll see you on the next ride. Oh, and subscribe. Make sure to check out his channel too and all the links below. I'll see you on the next one. Ayo! Hey